What's up, people? This video, Gina Harrison gives me the link, 12,000 calories a day, strongest man bodybuilder. Hmm. I don't know what strongest man bodybuilder is. Like, he's a strong man and a bodybuilder. 12,000 calories a day, that's a lot of calories. Um, okay, well, if you guys have any other recommendations for videos or YouTubers that you want me to watch and talk about, let me know. Leave My diet, <laughs> um... God. Oh, world's strongest man, not a bodybuilder. Oh, is this Brian oh, Mark Bell? Uh, interesting. Mark Bell. Oh, isn't this the guy? Didn't he used to be really fat or something? Anyway, whatever. Um, okay. Hmm. I should also say at the beginning, uh, this diet is uh, to make me as strong as I possibly can. So, you know, it's, it's definitely not, um, you know, the, the Mark Bell uh, no-carb um, diet at all. I'm just needing to be the strongest human being on the planet. So some of the stuff you might uh, be a little surprised by, but, you know, I have a dietitian that I work with. He shoots me over the diet. I don't ask questions. I just eat. Most of the time, I, I get a smile at some of the stuff that I get to eat. So meal number one is uh, kind of my choice of cereal. So I think today I'm going to go with Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I like that a lot. Um, and then I have eight eggs and then peanut butter. So that's, that's what we, we're going to kick off with here. So I'm going to start um, getting the pan going here. It'll be like we're uh, filming a cooking show, right? A strong man cooking show. Should be fun. So, so everything, everything still, even though I'm eating something like this, this is just pretty much to get in and out fast. Um, it doesn't, this meal, uh, even though it's eight eggs and all that, it doesn't seem to really fill me up. Um, and I get through it pretty, pretty, pretty quickly and I'm hungry again, which is exactly what, what we want. We want it in and out. Um, so you'll, you'll see kind of, every meal's gonna have protein and carbs in it uh, through the day and, and uh, we just vary the sources. Um, but it's really in and out. We want the, the engine burning, so to speak, all day long. So definitely gotta try to make food taste good. I'm not a, not even close to a chef, but normally I'll throw a little bit of seasoning on or whatever to make it easier to eat. Um, but normally for me, it's, it's simple, effective. That's what we're going for is just, whatever makes it a little bit easier to eat uh, and get down. So one thing I would say with eggs that I've learned over the years is uh, you don't want to cook them too long. Uh, you want to make sure they're still soft because they're in a big quantity, easier to eat if they're not quite hard. You don't want them to uh, too overcook. So okay, that's what I kind of do with my eggs is keep them a little bit softer so it's easier to kind of eat them quickly. When you're eating, you know, this is lower. Sometimes we'll go up to 12 eggs at one time. Uh, so you want to make sure that you can get those down without having to work too much uh, at all. So these are about good here. If I'm hungry, some days I'm literally just, I can't eat enough. I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. And then other days it's like not hungry, but I have to force the food. So then if I come to that, if I come to that two hour window, and I'm not hungry, then I have to just eat anyway. So this one, like I said, this gets... So I kind of wonder, right? Like, all right, like, uh, first of all, not your typical athlete, you know? This, like, strongman thing. Where's my fucking cord? This, like, uh, strongman thing is... Um, it's crazy, like, what these guys do. Like, a actually insane. Like, to be to be as strong as possible. Like, the old strongman is basically power lifter, right? It's like, how much can you, like... How heavy can you bench like one rep? You know what I mean? But the strongman shit is just like, it's, it's way more functional and they train a lot harder and it's just more fun. I think overall, it's like more entertaining also to watch. I used to watch the old, like world strongest, strongest man competition, Magnus for Magnuson. Is that no? Yeah. Magnus for Magnuson, like the old school, like champion guy, whatever. Anyway, I don't remember if that's actually his name. Um, but like. You know, and again, what do I know? I'm not a fucking strong man. Never will be a strong man. Obviously, this is not a diet that anybody should copy ever, <laughs> unless you are wanting to be a strong man. Um, but it seems like it would be fun. Like, the dude, I mean, you know, obviously on something, probably a lot of some things, but it's like, how cool would it be to just be like, okay, I'll, I guess I'll just be, I'll just die by like 65, but I'll take a bunch of like shit and just eat enough for like four people in a day um so i can lift like some really heavy rock like a fucking 300 pound rock and like put it on some pedestal and, like lift like like pull a boat you know fucking 50 meters see how fast i can do that um the only thing i'm wondering is like the cinnamon toast crunch I'm trying to think like what's the reason for that because that's not there's not a lot of nutrients in there the only thing that i could possibly think is that he wants that to spike his insulin so that he has, I guess, better nutrient absorption for the all the eggs and peanut butter. That's the only reason I could think. I don't know. He says he has a nutritionist who like tells him what to eat. Ugh, I'm not a nutritionist. Oh my god, I'm so sore. All right, what I mean, else? It seems got? like this gets in and out pretty quickly for me, um, and that's what we want. So if I'm, and especially coming off of uh, such a heavy training uh, last night with a bigger deadlift, and anytime I do that, I typically have the day afterwards. My no body's normally craving uh, a lot of food and a lot of calories, so it, that's good because then we'll fire through this. I'll get hungry in half an hour, maybe not even an hour, uh, and then I'll go right into my next meal, which is great. Eating is, is the, for me. I've said this a lot, but it's, it's the hardest part because it's it's constant, and I, you don't ever stop. Like from the time I wake up, you eat literally until I go to bed, and then I wake up in the morning. The first thing I do is eat, and then I do it all day again. You know, so I don't ever get to just chill out and be like, you know. 
I'm not going to eat. You know, that's not, not an option. It's, but training is fun. People think the training is the hard part. It's not really because that's fun. I get to go kind of let loose and train and do what I want to do. And but this is what helps me perform. So it's kind of go hand in hand. But this is a, you know, you get to train for a few hours maybe during the day. But this is all day, you know, constantly. So it, it's, you know, it's, it's a necessary evil, so to speak. That's kind of what I would have about that much. Maybe we have to talk a little bit. <laughs> We're going to kind of count the calories up here. So for the first uh, meal, uh, the cereal and, and eggs was like 1,200, 1,300 calories, um, give or take. So it's a good start. Obviously, that's, I think that's probably what some, what like figure and, and the competitors, that type of thing, would eat an entire day, 1,200 calories or something. Maybe if they're really restricted, um, but we'll be uh, totally, obviously, way above that. So we are going to go into, uh, now we've had, we've had, we've had about an hour um, since my first meal. So meal number two for me will be a uh, protein shake and... Um, uh, granola bars and peanut butter. So we'll uh, let's do the shake here. So this one, this one, what I'm going for is about uh, roughly 80 grams of protein. So fill this guy up. You're not quite. And this is this is a bigger shaker. This is a, like a 40 ounce um, shaker. So I don't um, typically like things. Everything from me is bigger. So uh, I found those and I was pretty happy because the smaller shakers just don't cut it. So so and this is just a uh, a whey protein. So I'm gonna do um, this is 25. Oh, yeah, 25, yeah, 25 grams of protein per scoop. So I'm just gonna do three scoops and then I'll throw a little bit extra just to try to get closer to that um, 80. So there's more. So I don't get it. Is this like immediately after his meal or this is just like, like an hour later, or a couple hours later or something? Um, okay. Uh, cool. <laughs> I guess seems kind of fun. Honestly. Um, I kind of actually, I, I would, I would almost like to try that. Like let's say I went off OMAD, like uh, maybe do like, all right. So I'm like pretty consistent with the OMAD, you know, one meal a day, fucking do my workouts, blah, blah, blah. But I, th I think, I forget what video I was I was talking about. I think maybe it was like a Greg Doucette video. I'm not really sure. Anyway, one of my recent videos, I got, no, it was the Lane, Lane, Lane something, Lane Norton maybe. Anyway, I was talking about doing a more um, cyclical version of OMAD, right? Where in, in that video, what I was talking about is, because he was talking about how many grams of protein, like uh, how fast your body will build muscle as opposed to if you're eating once a day or if you're eating several small meals throughout the day. And the, the clear winner is several small meals throughout the day. It's, it's more inconvenient, um, takes more work, more opportunities to fuck up your diet, but overall building muscle, you know, obviously that's gonna be better. Um, you can't actually eat enough in one meal, like impossible to eat enough in one meal, I think, to build a body like this. I'm gonna say it's impossible. And even if you could eat that much, highly unlikely your body's capable of processing that much protein in one meal to grow this much. I, I just, I don't think it's possible. Um, so what I was thinking of doing is maybe cycling OMAD or maybe even like, for example, eat, eat like this guy, let's say once a week, right? Try and get fucking 12,000 calories, like once a week or maybe even twice a week and then twice a week do OMAD and then twice a week do like, I don't know, some, somewhere in between eating like just, I don't know, every, every two or three hours or something and then one fast per week to kind of lean me out. Um, the, the issue with that, and that would be like the goal of this would be to have a more varied, um, cause like regardless of what you do, whether you eat like this guy on one extreme or you eat like me on the other extreme, um, you're going to be limited because your body's going to constantly, like this guy is limited because he's fat, right? Like uh, nothing against him. He's really a hundred times stronger than me. He could like break me in half for sure but he's really fat, probably doesn't run like ever um, and not very aesthetic. I mean, unless you like that like big fat muscular guy look. Um, and on the other end, like, okay, maybe I'm more aesthetic and I can for sure run longer than him, I think. Um, but I don't have nearly as much muscle. The guy probably weighs like at least two times as much as what I weigh. And I, I would like more muscle, that'd be nice. So I think by, by cycling it, you're able to kind of get a little bit more of both worlds, right? It's kind of the same concept behind CrossFit, right? You don't want to only train one way all the time. You want to, you want to diversify your training a little bit. So I don't know. I'll, I think now, the more that I think about it, the more I'm kind of tempted to do like a little bit of a, uh, an experiment like that. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do it. Um, but definitely something that I would like to play with and just see if I can change my body composition beyond what I can change it with just through actual training. Just a little bit more there. For meal number two here, um, all, all together we just kind of calculated out the calories. Uh, it's, it's not quite 1100 um, right there. So I think with breakfast was, what, what did we say now? 13, 13. Okay, so right now with two meals we're, um, 
just about 2,300 calories, give or take. So we're, uh, we're doing good, doing good with that. I'll have to get started. So we are now getting ready for meal number three of the day. Uh, now we'll get into some meat and pasta. So uh, this will be my beef that I, I get is uh, uh, from a local farm. So it's all certified organic grass fed, uh, amazing is what it is. Uh, so I'll cook that and then we'll cook some uh, just regular angel hair pasta and then I get to have that with uh, with a red um, pasta sauce. So this is a good meal, it's, it's kind of a staple, um, that kind of comes in and out of my diet, but um, I definitely do a lot of beef uh, typically. So this this uh, beef is amazing. So it's, you know, there's a lot of talk certainly about different beefs and why you know one's higher quality or better. The biggest thing I think for me is other than the taste and it's, it's incredible, uh, the grass fed and especially this beef that's all certified awesome, uh, I can digest it so quickly. So. Back way, way back when I used to buy beef from the grocery store, I remember I was trying to eat a huge quantity of it, and it was just like a lump in my stomach. And I, I could just tell when I switched to grass fed, the huge difference was I felt better and I could digest it a lot easier. And it's healthier for your body if you do a little bit of research on that. It's incredible the benefits. So, um, certainly something to look into if you're not doing that. But um, yeah, and uh, the local, if you can find anything local, like here in Colorado, there's a lot of uh, grass fed beef that you can find from uh, farmers, and that typically is, is the best. I mean, getting it from the grocery store is good as well, but uh, the next level is to do that. So, that's even better. So, what we're, what we're looking at here uh, with this meal is uh, a little bit over 22 calories total uh, for this meal and then uh, this after I finish this I'll bring my daily um, intake right now to uh, just out over 4,500 and this is like I said with my third meal so we're on track we're doing good um keep it rolling I'm feeling uh still pretty hungry which is great so um hopefully this one uh, I can fire this down and, and still feel that way um here in another hour hour and a half something like that so get this started make it happen it's a nice touch with the music very classy um so just like furthering along my own thought experiment, um, if you take MK677 or Ibutamorin, I've mentioned this in a few of my other videos, but basically it's a, um, I think it's a peptide that you can take, that you take orally that stimulates your body to produce more growth hormone naturally. So like it's much safer than injecting growth hormone, which is not safe. Um, why is it not safe? Oh yeah, I I don't I don't remember exactly why it's not safe. There, there's side effects to injecting it, like your hands grow, your face, like your your skull actually grows. It's kind of fucked up. Um, but when your body produces more naturally, you don't have those problems, right? Because I guess your body can regulate it more efficiently. Um, anyway, the point is that when you when you take that, when you take a um you get super hungry. You can eat I don't want to say twice as much but you can eat about 75, 50 to 75% more. I would say maybe 50 to 100% more, depending on how hard you train. And you're just, you're super hungry, like way hungrier. So I'm thinking like, okay, like if I added that, and it's not something that necessarily needs to be taken every day, I could just add that in on heavy eating days, let's say. Um, getting up to 12,000 calories, uh, I don't know if I could do that, to be honest with you. That's a lot. I'd probably have to like work my way up. And he's, you know, w one good thing about this, he's eating fairly clean food. Like, fine, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, not the best. Pasta, also not the best. But he's not fucking slamming donuts and, you know, Krispy Kreme fucking ice cream and all that shit, right? He's eating like fairly clean food that, that will help him grow. Maybe not the most nutrient dense. But I think that when you're having, like when you're committed to having so many calories, you kind of have to make a sacrifice in terms of the, the nutrient density of the food that you're eating. Cause it's not, you know, you, you, he can't have 12,000 calories of meat only. It's like not possible even for him. I don't think M maybe, I don't know. Um, but yeah, the more I watch this, the more I kind of want to try my own little version of this. Obviously can't really do that now. Wouldn't really want to do that now because I don't have access to the type of gym or training facility that would really make it worthwhile just because I have to run so much to actually get to the gym. That's like, what's the point? Um, but maybe, yeah, in the future for sure. Okay, so we're going to go over meal number four. And again, I'm going to go back to a shake. Um, so it'll be another uh, 80 grams of protein powder so that's like uh, three and a little bit over three scoops of this um peanut butter again and then for this shake i'm gonna mix it instead of water i'm gonna mix it in a uh, uh two cups of unsweetened almond milk so um yeah that's gonna add a little bit more calories but not not a lot uh, to that and then uh the carb source for this will be uh blueberries so i'll do these are just uh, frozen organic uh blueberries that I, I throw in there so basically uh just mix all together again this is this is a nice one for me because i can get it in quick um and we'll kind of figure out here the calorie breakdown so this uh once this is done this meal will be another thousand calories um i will uh for this i blend it up um obviously a little bit easier just to kind of throw it all together especially with the blueberries but it makes it makes an awesome shake and i'll just slam that down um so once i get done with this one uh for the day after this is the fourth meal it's always tough to keep count sometimes but um we'll be at uh just over 5,500 calories uh total for the day after four meals all right so we are uh getting ready for meal number five here so what this is going to be is it's going to be uh turkey um so i'll show you here grab this so this is just an organic uh, ground turkey um that we'll have and then uh 
So 93% lean. Um, and then uh, we'll do rice. This is just a regular white jasmine rice. And then broccoli. So I'll do that after. Um, we should probably get this one first. While I cook uh, the turkey. So get this fired up. It's cute, dog. Um, yeah, so like when it, when you're eating so much food, I, I guess n now that I, uh, this is something I really just realized right now. Like I kind of realized it when I was doing one of Greg Doucette's videos where he's talking about healthy foods or unhealthy foods that people think are healthy or unhealthy, like healthy foods people think are unhealthy, whatever, one of those, I don't remember which one it was. Um, but it was basically like, you know, in, in the beginning of the video, he's talking about all these foods and I'm thinking to myself like, okay, are these actually healthy or not? Um, and again, they're not bad per se. They're not like explicitly bad. Like a donut, I would say is bad, right? That's, you can't really say like a donut is good in, in some situation. Maybe to spike your insulin, I guess it's good. Okay. There's better ways. It tastes good. But anyway, what I'm getting at is that when you're eating, this guy's on his fifth meal already. You, you have more, not that you have more flexibility in terms of what you eat, but you're naturally going to be, you're going to loosen the guidelines of what you eat. Um, just because number one, you don't want to eat the same food for every fucking meal. Some bodybuilders do, I guess, but <laughs> like that guy who drank the fish shakes, I forget his name. Oh my God. He would like blend up fish and rice <laughs> in a blender and drink it. <laughs> Disgusting. Um, but you know, when you're eating eight meals a day or nine or whatever this guy will get up to eventually, it's it's less important that you make absolutely the 100% correct food choice. I mean, it's still important, right? It just becomes less significant to you and more significant that you choose just kind of generally the right thing, right? Like if I'm eating one meal a day, I'm not gonna have frozen blueberries. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna have protein powder. I'm not gonna have maybe a little bit of peanut butter because I like peanut butter. I'm not gonna have fucking a, a meal full of like pasta, maybe once in a while if I'm like, whatever, it's like a semi cheat meal. Um, when you only eat one meal a day, you put more care into the foods that you eat because they affect you. you. You feel the effects more when you eat them because you have no food in your body for the entire day. And when you eat that meal, if you eat bad food, you're going to feel the effects of eating bad food. And it's not, it's not pleasant. It's not fun. Um, but when you're eating fucking nine meals throughout the day, like, are you really going to notice like the effects of like your fucking fourth meal that was pasta and meat sauce? Like, probably not because like in a couple hours you're gonna be eating again you're gonna be working out like it's you just you just notice it less um so yeah i, I don't know S something i guess for me to think about just because it's been so long since i've done that and if i'm actually like going to legitimately actually try doing this like i'm not gonna eat eight meals a day of fucking raw meat every single meal i could try that might be interesting i would probably just have to force feed myself at that point actually that might be interesting maybe i will try that all right, so uh, with this meal, total calories here uh, are just over 1,400. Um, and for the day, then, after I consume this, we'll be at uh, roughly uh, 7,000. So not, not quite um, at 7,000, but very close. So we're, and we still got, we still got uh, quite a bit to go. So, so it's adding up. It's adding up for sure. Eating meal <laughs> five while picking up meal six. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you caught me. Yeah. When you love food too much. You know. So we are getting ready to eat meal number six, and this is actually um, different than I would normally do. And the scenario that we have is tomorrow is a huge event training day for me. So I'm going to be obviously putting out a lot of effort for training. And we, I work with my with my guy, guy Nathan Payton, and I texted Nathan earlier. I gave him an, an update about uh, deadlifting yesterday and what you know kind of how I'm feeling. And this is uh, what he's recommended for me to do. So typically this would be another pound of uh, beef and potatoes and asparagus. Um, that's what I would normally have, but this is now subbed in. So basically what we're doing here is a big pasta meal, a lot of carbs. Um, get ready for uh, training tomorrow and then i'll see how i respond to this so essentially that's what's happening and we've estimated kind of the calories here, here um out to be about rough, roughly 3430 um give or take i mean it's, it's kind of hard because obviously this is something i didn't cook and, and uh, we got it um you know take out so that's a pretty i feel like that's a pretty good estimate though because i mean it's, it's you know um quite, quite a few calories for one meal so with that added to the daily total now we'll be at uh, 10,370. so that's what we're sitting at now um so i'll go ahead and get this down and then um i still got one more um one more meal to do uh before bed so yeah we got gotta crush this real quick and, and uh, hopefully um it tastes as good as it looks so yeah, this guy's loving this, huh? Um, yeah, so like basically with these strength athletes, let's call them, 
because it, it, they are technically athletes, right? It's, they are, we'll just call them strength athletes, right? Um, and the reason I kind of hesitate when I say that is because in, it, when I say the word athlete, I kind of think to myself, somebody who needs to like, I don't want to say like, I, I guess technically you are in direct competition with other people but you don't compete against them. Well, I guess if you're a strong man, maybe you do, because those are those events are against other people. Anyway, whatever, when, you, when you're a strength athlete, there's a lot of like anecdotal evidence or basically people's opinions that will say, and I guess with any sport, actually, now that I think about it, like, what did he say? He's like, okay, I talked to my deadlift guy and I have like a big training tomorrow. I guess he has like a special deadlift coast or something. And he said to basically go get fucking meatballs and pasta and garlic bread and eat that before training deadlifts tomorrow because you need a lot of carbs. Um, and I'm just wondering like, okay, on the one hand, this is not nutrient dense food. Like this is, it's like white bread, white pasta. I, I think this is diet Coke. I'm just thinking what's, what's the goal here. Right. And, and I, when, when you're, I think he's in the heaviest weight class when you are competing as a strong man, the, the heavier you are, I guess, kind of the easy it will be. Because when you're extremely heavy, you have more leverage. You're, you have, you're able of, you're, you're capable of a greater um, power output, I guess, or is it force output? I'm not sure. Um, but the extra weight will help you, basically. It's the same in powerlifting, why those guys get like, the heaviest weight class gets gigantic, because it's in their best interest to be as big as possible. So I think, I think that's like half of it. I think this is like half, okay, you need to be as heavy as possible. So eat this food that's not so nutrient dense, you can get a lot of calories. And the other part of it is like, okay, you need to eat a lot of food that's not nutrient dense, you can get all the calories, but it also needs to have something in there that will keep you going for your like super heavy workout that you have tomorrow. Um, I just wonder if this is the best choice, you know what I mean? Cause like, and again, guy works hard, obviously. Is, is he actually the world's strongest man? Maybe, I, I don't really know. But even if he's not like, he's up there for sure like <laughs> you know what i mean um but i just wonder like i, I almost wonder like is this the best choice like why, why would you eat this and not clean food is what i'm what i'm really asking and i and the the answer the only answer i can come up with is because clean food is more nutrient dense and you won't be able to eat as many calories because you'll get full and it'll just be harder overall um and then i guess my next question is that if you're eating fucking 10 meals throughout the day and you're eating nutrient dense food would that not, would the, would the increase in performance and overall like well-being, would that make up for the, let's say calorie, like a reduced amount of calories that you would have in your training, right? Like what's better overall, I guess is what I'm asking. And like, what do I know? I don't know shit. I've never fucking competed in this. I've never even trained like this ever in my life. Um, so they probably know better than me, but I don't know. I, I just, if, if you're, if you're an athlete, why would you not want to have the cleanest food possible? Right. Is this like a special type of sport where you don't want that? Um, I don't know. I think, again, this is one of those things where like when, when you take steroids, you can kind of not cheat a little bit, but like you kind of can, you can eat this shit and still have fucking tons of gas in the tank the next day at the gym because your body is more effective at utilizing what you put in it and maybe the additional weight gain and the steroids and you know the fact that that the drugs can like help you utilize what you have more efficiently makes up for the fact that it's not super nutrient dense i don't really know fucking conjecture all right, so we are to my final meal of the day. Um, this has been, as you can see, a lot of eating today, and I actually, um, because of the schedule, uh, last night I had flown yesterday, I got home, we did a huge deadlift training, and I was a little backed up on food. So I didn't really finish eating until about 2 in the morning, and then we got started this morning. So we crammed kind of all the food into about 13 hours. So we're going to get all these calories in about 13 hours. Um, and i got to get that done because I need to get to sleep because uh, tomorrow we'll train earlier in the day. So this is just the way the schedule works, and it's part of the game. So um, this is kind of a fun meal, one of my favorites right now. So we're going to go uh, cheesecake, as you can see already. It's not brand new. <laughs> and then we'll, uh, we'll also get some uh, bioactive whey protein. So we'll do another 80 grams uh, protein shake. Um, and then I get to choose how much uh, cheesecake that I want with this meal. So um, typically I would have two or three, but as you can see, there's only four left, right? So I'm not going to leave 
one there by itself, right? So we probably should just finish that off. I feel like that's the right choice to make, especially with such a big day of training tomorrow. So, so this um, will be combined uh, 1,650 calories, which will, for the uh, for the day after I consume all this, will, will leave us at uh, 12,020 calories. Big day of eating, especially because I didn't get to spread it out as much as I would have liked, but I'm actually pretty happy with how I feel. Um, I feel like I've, you know, been fairly hungry, um, you know, give or take. There's a couple meals where I didn't feel as hungry, certainly, but um, tonight I feel good, I feel full, um, and I'll feel certainly perfect after I finish all this in a little bit. So, yeah, it's, it's one of those things, that, you know, I get to see how I respond tomorrow with training, and that's really the end, end goal. It's not about trying to eat a lot of food, eat a lot of food. It's how does all of this help me to perform uh, with my training. So, yeah, I think it'll be a really good big event day, um, and my last really heavy uh, event training session before World Strongest Man. So, you know, we got to kind of kick it up a notch. We got to see and, and um, feel, I have to feel how I'm going to respond to all of this to make sure that I'm ready for the contest, which I already know I am ready, but it's going to be nice on the weights feel really easy tomorrow. So that's the day of eating. It's uh, something we haven't really shown before, and, and hopefully you guys, you know, can uh, get something out of this. So when somebody actually says to you, hey, I'm eating uh, 10,000, or in this case, 12,000 calories in a day, you can actually see the quantity um, of food and how frequently you would actually need to eat to get that in um, in one day. So pretty crazy, but this is why I say I make comments a lot about the diet is the hardest part for me. Um, it's not the training and this is why because it's constant all, all day long i have to eat so part of the job and uh you know you gotta make it happen um interesting he's so nice like what a nice guy is, does he not he strikes me as like a very nice like kind of like a goofball um and like again so like same thing i said last time I, i've never done this i don't know what i'm talking about right number one cheesecake is not particularly nutrient dense it's just calories essentially like empty fat uh, like fat and sugar right and then you're like supplementing that with protein powder to give you i guess like protein and like a good amino acid profile from whey protein um but like th like this this remind like th when i watched this this reminded me of what i used to do this used to be like my kind of mentality when it came to multivitamins right i was like okay i can eat whatever i want as long as i take my multivitamin you know because the multivitamin will give me all the vitamins minerals and all that shit that i need over the course of a day what is not exactly like that because like you know obviously you're going to feel better if you eat the right food and don't take a multivitamin as opposed to if you, you eat shit food and take your multivitamin um i didn't really realize that at the time i do now or i believe that now whatever and this seems kind of like similar mentality, right? And I know he's got a coach and blah, blah, blah. And like, what do I know? But when you, um, cause the cheesecake is essentially just empty calories. Like the only real, I guess, benefit to the meal is like the only good stuff is coming from the protein powder. A couple scoops of that, lots of amino acids that your body actually needs and can do something with. And the protein, which you can do something with as well. And I guess the fat, is that just to like keep him fat? is it I, I don't really know or like are the are the steroids like so effective that they can use those extra calories just so efficiently that the difference between eating 1600 calories of like healthy food versus unhealthy food is is negligible so you might as well eat the cheesecake because it tastes better and it's easier to get down is that it i'm not really sure anyway this was an interesting video i like this guy he's a charmer um if you guys have any other recommendations for videos or YouTubers you want me to take a look at, let me know. Leave me a comment. Peace.